In this one, we're continuing our spooky character modeling series with this witch right here. If you'd like to download any of the characters I've made this month, I put all of them on my Patreon, including their animations and the sets from the thumbnails. Patreon is where all of the project files live. There's a link in the description. Here's a quick summary of what we'll cover. We'll bring in a reference image and get started on the modeling, which will mostly be box modeling with a few parts that use the skin modifier, like the arms and the hair. And for the skirt, we're using a cloth simulation. Then we'll hop into the shader editor to give our witch some color. And last, we'll make a simple rig and parent everything up so you can make your witch do a dance. All right, let's get started. All right, here we are in Blender. I'm using version 2.93 for this one. So the first thing I'm going to do is add in our reference. So I'll just make a new window up here and I'll change it to the image editor like that. And I'll just open up my reference. You can see my reference is a drawing that I made. The reference that I'll be providing, uh, I'll put a link for it in the description. It'll just be like a 3D render of the front and the side of the finished character instead of being this drawing. And instead of like modeling the character on top of the drawing, I'm just going to leave it up here and just try to make it similar. So the next thing I'm going to do is just change some of the shading options up here. I like to use a matte cap, so I'll change this from studio to matte cap and change this to this colorful one right here. It makes it a little easier to see shapes when you make things transparent, so I like to use that one. So I'll start with the hips. For that, I'll bring in a cube with Shift A. And you can see I'm already in X-ray mode. You can get there with Alt-Z, or you can hit this box up here to get into X-ray mode. And so for this, I'm going to hit Control-2. That adds a subdivision surface, and I'm also going to add a mirror modifier over here. And I just want the mirror modifier to be at the top, and we'll enable clipping. I'm going to tab into edit mode for this. You can just scale this down with S like that. These big squares right here, it might be hard to see in the recording, but these big squares are supposed to be like one meter. And I try to keep things close to real life scale. So I'm going to be doing the hip around the one meter mark. So I'll drag this to the side now and you can see clipping will make it so at a certain point it does that. And then when you try to move it, the middle points will stay in the center. But I know that there's a face on the inside right here that I need to delete because we don't want any faces on the inside. It doesn't really make sense. I'll just scale this down at a loop cut right here to make it a little more round. You can do that with Control R. So in vertex select mode up here, I'll just select these top verts right here and drag them in. I'm just trying to round this out a little and make it less rigid and square. And we might have to come back and edit this when we get started with our legs too. I'm just trying to make a shape that I think looks good right here. Feel free to play around with it. And then in the side view with three, I'm going to want to bring these in by scaling them on the Y axis like that. I think for our hips, that is looking okay. And to keep everything organized, I'm just going to name this over here in our outliner. We're going to be making a lot of different objects. So it's important to stay organized. Okay, now we can get started on our legs. So I'll just duplicate this actually, because we're going to be using the same modifiers. And I'll just rename this legs like that. And we can tab into edit mode. And I'm actually just going to delete everything in here and shift A and add in a plane. We can just scale it. And once again, I'm in edit mode while I'm doing all of this. I'll just bring it over here. And it looks like we still have clipping on and I don't want it to be stuck in the middle. I want these to be two separate pieces. So I'm actually going to turn off clipping and merge. I'll extrude this down and you can see the shading looks a little different. The light part is on the top of this one and the light part is on the bottom of this one. Um, that's because everything is inside out right now. You can also tell if it's inside out for sure by going up here to overlays and turning on face orientation. And if it's inside out, it'll be red. So a way to fix that is by selecting the inside out points, hitting F3 and searching for flip, choosing flip normals, and that should fix it. So now I should be able to just drag some points around, once again in x-ray mode, and I'm just looking at my reference for this, trying to match the shape. I'm going to add a point in the center with control R like that, and we can get a little more uh, nuanced shape. So I think this is actually looking pretty good. So I'm actually going to edit my hips again, just to fine tune it and make sure I think it looks good. And I'm just trying to get kind of a smooth transition from our legs to our hips. I don't want the difference to be too sharp. I want it to be kind of smooth if I can. We also want to make sure it looks good from the side. So I think I might make the legs a little thinner in this direction right here. And I can do the same thing with the hips. And don't feel like you have to match the reference exactly. Once you bring it into 3D, you might decide that you want it to look 
a little different. So now that these are done, uh, I'm actually going to work on the shoes next. And for the shoes, I'm going to make them part of the leg. So select your legs and go into edit mode right here. If you want them to be exactly on this line right here, what you can do is hit period and choose 3D cursor for the pivot point. And our 3D cursor is right in the center right here. So now when you select these points and extrude them downward like this, you can um, hit S to scale, Z, and then zero, and it'll just snap to that line right there. And then I'll change that back to the median point. And you can see in my reference, I gave my witch some like big chunky shoes. They're like combat boots or Doc Martens or something like that. So I'm going to try to match that style. So I think I might actually take this point and move it up a little so that I can have more room. So now I'm just going to select these points and extrude them outward on the X axis to keep it flat. So I think this is definitely too flat going this way. So I'll add a loop cut with control R like this pretty close to the top. And I'll just select all of these on the bottom and we can scale these out on the Y axis like that until it's as wide as we think is good. But we're going to add some more loop cuts in here. So we can add another one in the middle right here and look from the top. And if this is getting in the way, you don't want to see any of your the rest of your leg. We can actually isolate it. So I'll just hit three to go into face select and I'll just select all of these faces right here and hit H. So I'll just select these points on the side right here and scale them on the Y axis like that. And we might need to add more loops this way to straighten it back out. This is just a lot of trial and error until you think it looks all right. And every time I'm scaling it, I'm making sure I hit Y so that it's not scaling up or down. If you're not like constraining it to one axis, you might look from a different angle and everything will be different. So I try to be careful about how I'm scaling it. I also want the heel to come out a little more. So from the front, I'll add a loop cut right here and I'll just pull these points out. I'll go into edge select up here. You can also just hit two. I'll scale this face down right here. I want these shoes to be almost brick like. So I want them to be pretty cuby. So I'll bring this back a little just so we can get this area to be a little boxier. And I might actually just um, scale it out a little more like that. And I might add another loop cut up here to tighten it up a little. And I like it when the front is scooping up slightly. So next we'll make this bottom part right here. So I'll add another loop cut, hit N, or you can uh, pull this arrow out right here to open up the side panel. I'm going to go to item and I'm going to crease this. So I'm just going to turn mean crease all the way up and that will make it so when we scale that in, it'll be tight like that. So you can see the, the mean crease turning that up is making it sharper. So next I want to put a little split right here with the heel, where the heel should go. So I want to make sure that our edge is in a good spot. So I think I'll use this one right here. Basically what I'm going to do is just drag all these bottom points up and I'm going to change my pivot point to 3D cursor. And I'm just going to start selecting faces, bottom faces right here. So I want this to be the heel and I'll extrude that on the Z axis like that. And I'm going to scale that and hit zero. And once again, that's just going to snap it to this line right here. And we can do the same thing for these ones right here. Extrude this and hit S and zero and Z and make sure that it's on the Z axis like that. And now we should have a split. So I'll just go into edge select right here and select one of these edges. I gotta make sure that I sw switch back to the median point and it looks like this is connected to the front. So we can move that out right there. I'll do the same thing right here and select all of these bottom parts right here. And then I'll just deselect some of these edges going across. And I also want to select these parts right here because I want these to be sharp and the edge that's going between them right there. I think maybe these might need to be sharp too. And, and I think that is looking a little better. So I'll turn that up to like 0.5. And obviously you can uh, just take this spot in the middle and scale it however you want. And if you want to unhide your legs, you can hit Alt H like that and it'll unhide the legs. But if you go into object mode, they'll be there anyway. I want the boots to be absurdly large, so I'm just going to come in here and raise this up. And if you want to control the ankle more, you can bring another point in here. So for the head, I'm just going to add in a cube right here, and I'll subdivide that with control 2. The head itself is not going to be much more complex than this, honestly. So I'll just put that in place now, wherever I think it should go. And I'm just moving it and scaling it in object mode right now. This character is mostly legs. 
when you have it where you want it, just hit control A and apply the scale. All right, so that will be our head. And for the skirt, we're actually going to use a cloth simulation. And doing simulations is an area that I don't have a whole lot of experience in. So I did have to go through like a lot of trial and error until I had this working the way I wanted it to. But basically what we're going to do is just add in a plane with shift A like that. And we'll just place that between the head and the hips right here. And we can subdivide that with control two. I'm actually going to bump that up to like three over here. And then I'm going to go into edit mode right here. I want to hit I, and that's just going to inset a face right here. And I just want to make that so it's like a little smaller than the head. You don't really need to do this, but I think the topology ends up getting a little better. And I'll show you what I mean. If you go into wireframe right here and turn off optimal display, it'll actually show you the topology that's being created by the subdivision surface. And right now it's all quads and it looks nice. But when you inset it and when you delete that face, everything is kind of like branching towards the center. And it just looks a little better in the simulation that way. So I just want to scale this down until it's a little smaller than our head right here, like that. And now we'll add some cloth physics. So I think that's this one right here, physics. You can turn cloth on and when you hit spacebar, it should run and it's just going to fall through your body. That's because we need to select our hips and add collision right here. We can select our legs too and add a collision and our head like that. And now when we hit play, it should interact with our body and our head. But you can see it's pretty far away from our body. So we're going to change some of these settings. And I'm not going to explain exactly what all of them are because I myself am still learning quite a bit about it. But these are the things that worked best for me. So I turned quality steps up to eight, which I know ends up being a little slower. I turned the speed multiplier up to three. And this helps some problems when I animate it. It basically just makes the, um, the simulation faster. And so like small movements won't send it flying. The vertex mass, I'm going to turn up to something like one. So it's a little heavier. I'm going to scroll down, go to collisions. I'm going to turn the quality here up to eight as well. And I want to enable self collisions. This makes it so that the cloth won't go through itself basically. And I want to turn the distance of these both down pretty low. So 0 0.001 and I'll turn the distance of the self collision down to 0 0.001 also and I'm going to turn the impulse clamping up to like five and this just helps it be more stable. I'm just going back to the beginning of the timeline with a shift and left arrow like that. It's looking a little better and if you want you can also turn the subdivisions up but it will get a little slower so definitely like safe before you get to this part. You can see it's a little slower, but it looks a little more real. Also, if we let this go long enough, our skirt is just going to fall. So one thing we can do is add a pin group, which will make a certain part of it not move. So in my final version, basically what I did is I made it so that this ring right here is pinned to the hip bone. So whatever, wherever the hips go is where the skirt will follow, but we don't have one right now. So instead, what I'll do is turn the viewport levels down to three and then apply it. And then we can tab into edit mode and make sure we select this ring right here and go down here to object data properties and we're going to add a vertex group. So just click the plus right here and I'm just going to name this pin for now. And with this selected, you just want to hit assign and make sure that weight is set to zero. And so now we have a vertex group. Go back over to cloth and I think it's under shape. We can turn on a pin group and we can just select pin, which is the vertex group that we just made. And that'll make it so that the top won't move. Another thing you can do if you want to add some ripples in your skirt, you can go into edit mode. And basically what I'm going to do is just select one edge right here and then skip one and then shift select the other. And then I'm going to hit control shift plus and it'll continue that selection all the way around like that. And we can come up to select, select loops, edge loops, and it'll just select all of these edge loops right here. And we'll just pull it like that. And you can see it's kind of uh, rippling now. And then I want to turn on proportional editing up here, or you can just hit O and I'll select this ring right here. This whole ring, you can see it's selected. And I'm going to hit uh, S, Z, and then zero. You can control the area of influence for proportional editing with the scroll wheel. So I'll just bring that pretty far. So now the inside should be flat and the edges get more rippled. And you can select everything and just move it up to like between the head right there and just turn off proportional editing when you're done with it. So now let's see how that looks. 
If you want more detail, you can add a subdivision surface modifier, but once again, it's going to make it a little slower, and you can add that before the cloth simulation if you want that to apply to like the cloth physics. If you still see parts clipping through each other like this, you can try turning up or down the distance of your self-collision. So I'll just try to set this to like 0 0.005 instead and see if that helps. Maybe a little higher, even 0 0.01. And now it doesn't look like it's folding through itself as much. And you can shade that smooth to see what that looks like also. And I think it looks pretty good. If you want it to be a little shorter, the way I like to do that is just select this outer ring and make sure you have proportional editing turned on for this. And you can scale that part in. I'll hit uh, Shift Z so it's not scaling on the Z axis. You just want to make sure the area of influence is small enough so that it's not affecting the center ring. You can just scale it down a little and then test it and see if that's a good length. I think that's a pretty good length, so we'll leave it there. Next, I'll add these like scarf parts right here. So this is going to be pretty easy. Basically, what I'll do is just add in a plane and drag that up between the head and the hips. And I'll hit Control 2 to add in a subdivision surface modifier right here. And then in edit mode, I'll just scale this down. I want to make sure proportional editing is off for this. I'll scale this down and extrude it upward like that. And then I'll hit Control R to add a loop cut on both sides right here like that. And I'm just going to delete the top and the bottom faces. So we just have this loop now. And if we look from the top, we can kind of round this out a little by just selecting the corners and scaling them in. It's a little easier to see from the top if you add a solidify modifier like that. And now you can actually like see where it's moving. I'll just scale those in, but I'll hit Shift Z when I do that. And that way it won't scale on the Z axis. So now I'm just going to start positioning these and I'll add one in the middle and scale that out a little. So it's a little more round. That looks pretty good. I'll try moving the solidify above subdivision surface. You can see it smooths out a little. Instead, I think what I'm gonna do is actually, I'll put the subdiv at the top and change it to one and then duplicate it with shift D and put another one after the solidify. That way we have a little more of an edge and you can mess with the thickness of the solidify until it looks however you want. If you want this to flare out at all at the end, all you have to do is add a loop cut pretty close, scale the top part out a little, and it'll become a little more bell-shaped. For the top, I'm not going to do that, but I would like that for the bottom. So I'll just select everything and duplicate it like that, and I'll just move it down. And I'm going to have a separate piece right here. So this part, I'll just scale out a little like that. And I want it to kind of come up above the bottom of our other one right there. And right now you can see I just have three loops that I'm adjusting the shape of. Basically what I'm looking for is I don't really want it to clip through our skirt too much, but I don't want it to be hovering above it too much either. So I'm just adjusting the shape until I think it looks all right. You want to make sure it looks good from the side too. I'm actually not going to make this little belt th thing in the tutorial just because it was um, it was giving me some troubles when I started trying to rig and animate it. But we'll make the arms next, which is pretty easy. I'm just going to use the skin modifier. So I'll add in a plane right here and drag that up to where I think the arms should be. They're basically just going to be sticking out kind of through the, the scarves. Then I'll tab into edit mode, select everything, and hit M and merge at center. So it'll create a single vert. And you can drag this out now. And I'm just gonna add a few modifiers. So I'll add the mirror modifier, so it's mirroring across. And then I'll add the skin modifier to give it some thickness. You can scale that down with Control A, like that. I'll add a subdivision surface modifier to smooth it out. If you don't know about the skin modifier, you should check out my video that I made recently about the skin modifier. It goes through um, all the specifics of how to use this. And I actually make some hands and arms and all that, so I'm not going to explain this too much. I'm just a little as I go along. So I'll bring that in and just extrude, and then we can get started on the hands. I'm just going to hide the feet. I'll hide the skirt too. So I'll extrude a little on the X. This will be our wrist, and I want to move the root back to the shoulder. Oop, mark root like that. And I'll extrude a little for some fingers right here. So I'll have three fingers and a thumb, and I'll straighten these out on the x-axis by scaling them. 
down to zero, and we can just extrude these out also. And I'll do the same thing for the thumb. Now I can scale these down with Control A, and we can scale them apart with S like that. I'll do the same thing over here. Might have to scale these down like that. That looks good. I want my thumb to be up like this, but it seems like the topology is a little better when I push it back a little further like that. So I'll leave it that way. And if you want it to move later, you can just do that with rigging. Or you can do it in edit mode, however you like. I think I might actually make the hands a tad bit smaller. And I want the arms to be skinnier. I'll just pull this part in a little so it's not sticking out too much. I want it to be going like into the head. I'm not going to worry about the clipping too much. Now what we're going to do is apply some of these, which is a little more destructive. So if you think you might want to change your hand at all, what you should do, well, first of all, I'm going to rename it. And then you can duplicate it like that and just hide it. Even though I'm going to apply this, if I change my mind and I want to edit it like with the skin modifier, I can just go back and use this one right here. So now with this one selected, I'll just apply the skin modifier right here, apply. And you can see now when we come in here, we can actually edit the surface of our object. We couldn't really do that before. So now we can create a sleeve. So what I'll do is just uh, select these edges right here, and I'm going to right click. You want to make sure you're in edge select for this. You want to right click and edge split like that. And that'll make it so um, the hand and the rest of the arm are disconnected. So now you can hover over here and hit L, and that'll select this part. And you can hit H to hide it. So now with this part right here, I should be able to select the edge and I'll just hit F um, and that will close it off. And now I can scale that out a little. And if I want to bring my hand back, I can hit uh, Alt H like that. And if we want to close this part off too, just so it's not open, we could do that. And this part now we can just pull out a little more. So I'll pull it forward like this and scale it up. And you can add another loop cut right here to affect the shape. And if you want this to actually look hollow, you can select this face and inset it like that and just pull that part in. And you can add more loop cuts if you want the shape to be more specific. Yeah, so now you can play with these shapes until you get something that you think looks good. Personally, I think it looks good when the shape of the sleeve is kind of conforming to the hand. You can just scale some of these out to have a little more of a, a, a smooth transition. If you want, you could also use proportional editing you know, and that will definitely make the shapes a little smoother like that. But with such few points, I, you know, I don't think it's, it's always necessary to do that. I also want this to be a little flatter going this way. So I'll just scale that down on the Z axis right here. Next, we'll make the hat. So I'll add in a plane right here and drag this up. And I'll hit Control 2 to add in the subdivision surface modifier. And I'll bump that up to 3 to make it just a little smoother. So now we can go into edit mode and move this around a little bit. So first thing I'm going to do is just uh, inset this. So you can inset with I, and this is going to be where our hat starts poking up like that. So you can see right here, it's like a normal witch hat. It's kind of pointy. So I'll scale this to where I want, and then I'll just extrude it upward like that. And I don't really want it to be smooth like this. So you can select this loop right here and just uh, turn the crease up all the way. And now it'll be quite a bit sharper. And this point you can make it however tall you want and then just scale it down quite a bit. I don't usually scale it down to zero because I don't like overlapping points. So now to get that curve, basically what I'm going to do, and this might look a little broken at first, but what I'm going to do is just um, move it back with G like this and rotate it, like flip it all the way around like that. So it looks a little broken right now, but I'm going to add a loop cut in right here. And I'm going to rotate this one, not all the way around, but like about that much. And I'll bring it up right here. And then I'll add one more and I'll pull it out. So now you can see it's not as broken. Basically what I'm trying to do is just create a flow like that. Another thing you can do if you don't want to do that is just start uh, extruding like this. Rotate it, extrude more, rotate it, extrude more like that. But... I don't know, something about uh, doing it this way. I think I just like doing it this way more. So once you get all of these in the right angle, you can adjust the rotation and their scale and all that until you think it looks good. So usually what I like to do is move it back a little and I'll take these points, move them down. I like the little bend to be pretty sharp. 
you can pull that part in. But you know, this part's entirely up to you. If you don't, if you, if you want, you could keep it completely straight. You could have it flipping some other way. You could have it spiral more. It looks a little thick at the top, so I might just take some of these loops and scale them on the x-axis like that. I think that looks pretty good. But this hat is enormous, um, so I think I'll scale the edge down a little. Let's see. I do want it to be pretty big, but I don't want it to be that big. And if you don't want to see the inside of your hat, what you can do is just like extrude this part downward on the Z axis like that. And with that edge selected, you can hit F to close it off like that. Um, I've also experimented a little with insetting this and then extruding it upward to make the inside just more smooth instead of looking completely hollow. I also like to select these loops right here and you can turn the crease all the way up if you want it to be more flat on the edge. I usually, instead of setting it to one, we'll set it to like 0.5. And if you don't want this to be like completely circular, you can select some of these points and uh, you know move them around like that. So the way I have it in this one is the front looks a little more narrow and the back is a little wider. So you can do that. I just scale it on the x-axis. I like to uh, rotate it on the x-axis and kind of put it into position. I think that looks like a decent size. If you want it to have more of a transition, you could totally do that by just you know adding in a loop cut towards the bottom and then scaling this out like that. But I think I might actually scale this in slightly just to make it a little closer to the size of the head. I want to add a little bend here. And instead of doing that in edit mode, you can do that with a modifier. So what I'll do is hit uh, Alt G and Alt R like that. And I'll add in a simple deform right here. And you can see that's going to affect it immediately like that. But what I want to do is change this to bend. And you can see it's kind of broken right now. It's um, it's making the top warp, but right here where it's completely flat isn't really looking right. You can add in an empty plane axis right here. Um, and what I like to do is just parent this to the hat with control P, parent to object like that. And then for the origin right here, you can select that empty like that. And now when you take this empty and you rotate it on the X axis, you can see it starts to bend in a way you expect, I guess. So I'll just rotate that 90 degrees on the X axis like that. And now you can bend it. And since we parented the empty to our hat, we should be able to move the hat around without the deform getting messed up. So we can put this back in place now over here. And when you have it where you want, if you want, you can apply this. The thing is you have to apply it from the top. Um, if you apply it right here, it's not going to look right. You would have to apply the subdivision surface modifier first, and then it would work. So all we have to work on now is the face and the hair. So I'll do the hair first. For this, I'm going to use a skin modifier also. So I'll add in plane right here, and I'll just pull it up to around where the hair is going to be. Tab into edit mode, select everything, hit M, and merge at center. So this is going to be where our hair starts, and we're going to use a skin modifier for this. So I'll add the skin modifier, and I'll add a subdivision surface modifier right there. And I'll just bump that up to two so it's a little smoother. And now we can select the point and scale it down and decide where we want our hair to start. So this is going to be parting kind of on the side like that. Basically try to get it where you want without uh, poking through the hat too much. So I'll extrude this out, then maybe this way, and then down. We have to mess with this quite a bit to get it looking okay. I want the root to be over here. It just makes more sense to me. And if you want, you can uh, scale this down over here to make it pointier, just like that. But I'm going to use uh, proportional editing for this, and I'll change that to sharp, like that. Now the shape is looking a little better, and I'll turn that off. You just want to mess with this until you think it looks good, basically. If you really want to, you can add hair without the hat on, but I don't really plan on taking the hat off this character, so I'm just going to model the hair around the hat. And if you want it to be a little smoother, you can just add more loops and pull it around like that. And we can just select this point with the root and duplicate it to add this other part right here. And we can use this for the other side, which isn't going to be very long. I think I'm just going to keep it as three points. And you can see it's clipping through the hat. I'm just going to try to make sure that's that's not really happening by scaling it down and moving it slightly. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. 
So the eye and the eyebrow are going to be pretty easy for that. I'll just use um, I'll just use a plane, rotate that on the X, and just get that into position where I think the eye should go, right about there. Scale it down, and when you get it to the size that you like, you can just hit Control A to apply the scale. Then I'll add a subdivision surface modifier with Control Two just to smooth it out a little, and we can control the shape in edit mode with some loop cuts like this. And I'll add a solidify, um, and I'll put that before the subdivision surface modifier, so it should look a little smoother. And I'm just going to duplicate this for the eyebrow and move it up slightly. And I'll just delete these points right here, just so we only have like this. We can use that for the eyebrow. I don't want it to be clipping through the hair, so I'm just going to move it out a little. And to make it tighter at the edges, you can just add a loop in the middle, and then I'll bevel that like that, so it's a little more square. Now I might just move it inward, and I'll uh, I'll rotate it in object mode like that. I'll and I'll reset the origin by right clicking, set origin, origin to center of mass like that. That way it's in the center. So everything that's using a skin modifier now, I'm going to apply. And once again, just like I did with the arms, if you think you might want to go back and change them around then you can just um, duplicate them like the hair and then hide it like that. So you have one that's not applied and one that is applied. So I'm just gonna select the hair and I'll apply that right here. And I think that's the only thing that needed to be applied. And now we can select everything and right click shade smooth like that. And I think for the shoes, what I'll do so we can still have some hard edges, select them, go down to object data properties under normals, turn on auto smooth. And you can see when you do that, um, it'll make this crease actually sharp. So next we're going to add some colors to our witch character so we can come up here to the shading area. And for this I'm going to be using a palette. Um, and the palette that I'm using is one that I made. You can download it for free from my Gumroad. Uh, I'll put a link in the description. So what we can do is just select, I'll just select the hair for now and click new right here. So we have this new material and I'll just name this witch. And we're going to use this for pretty much everything here. So I'll just select everything hit Control R and link materials. So now all of your objects should have this material assigned to it and you can see that if we change the color, everything is changing. So for the palette, I'm just gonna bring in an image texture right here. And if you downloaded my palette, you just wanna open it up right here. I already have mine in here, 256 palette like that. And I'll change this from linear to closest and that'll just make it not as blurry. You can plug the color into the base color. And you can see everything is working except for things that were made with the skin modifier. So those things, we can just select them right here. Tab into edit mode, select everything, and hit U and unwrap. And when we do that, um, you can see now it's it's working properly. I guess, you know, you can you can see that there are more colors. The way we're going to select colors is actually over in the UV editor tab right here. And when we're over here, you just want to tab out of edit mode. And I'm going to go into look dev right here. You just want to make sure that on this side, you have your palette selected. Now you can see when we select something, I'll just start with a skirt. When you select it and go into edit mode and select everything, you can see it's unwrapped over here. And you can actually select things over here and move them around and it will change the colors over here. So if you select everything over here and hit S to scale and then zero, it'll scale everything down to a single point. And you can see now when you move this around with G that it'll just change the color of everything. So I'm just going to make this black, have a black skirt. And we can do this for uh, all of our objects. So I want the hat to be black also. I'll just select everything over here, scale it down to zero and make it black. I think actually I'm going to select this. First of all, I want this to be sharp right here, so I'll go under normals and auto smooth like that. And I want to apply this, so I'm going to apply the subdivision surface and I'll apply the simple deform right there. And now when I tab into edit mode, I can select some loops right here. I want to create a stripe of color. So now when you go over here and move this dot around, it'll only move the ones that you selected. So I want to make this a uh, purple like that. I'll select the sleeves. You can do that with L. I'll scale everything down to zero. I'll make those black also. Then I'll select the hands and I want our skin to be green. So I'll make it green over here. If you want, you can either make it darker over here or desaturated by just bringing it down to one of these other levels. 
So maybe that is good. We'll do the same thing for our face. Just scale everything down and right there. That looks good. You're basically just going to run through and color everything the way you want using this method. You can also select multiple objects at the same time if you want. So uh, one thing that I did in my final model is I added some stripes to the legs right here. So I'll go back into the shading tab. So with the legs selected now, you want to come up here and hit this button right here, new material. And it's basically going to make a new copy of, um, you know, the one that already existed. So I'll name this one legs. And over here, I want to add another material. And I'll keep this one as which. So right now we have two materials on one object. And basically what I want to do is just make sure in edit mode that I select where the legs are that I want to be striped. And I can select that and select legs over here and hit assign. And then I'll hit control I and that just inverts the selection. Then I can select which right here and hit assign like that. So now we have two different materials. You just wanna make sure that legs is selected when you're editing over here. So basically what I'm gonna do is just bring in a wave texture like this. I just did that with shift A and then S to search. And we can plug this factor into the base color right here to preview it. You can add in a, uh, a texture coordinate. And for this, we're just going to use generated. And I'll plug that into the vector. And if you want to rotate this, you can either add in a mapping node right here and rotate things like this way just by like 90 degrees. Or you should be able to just change this from X to Z. And I think that should work fine also. So if you want this to be uh, hard edged, like, you know, normal, like striped tights would be, you can add in a math node, drop it in and set that to greater than. And now you can just change the scale right here until it's a size that you think looks good. Now we can add a mix RGB and I'm going to plug this into the factor and we can plug the color of this into the first slot right here and change the second color to black. So now we have our palette controlling the color of the stripes. And whatever we set this color to is going to be the color of the other stripes. Obviously, if you don't want any of these materials to be super shiny, you can come in here and turn up the roughness or something like that. If you wanna add a nice fabric texture to the skirt, you just wanna select your skirt, go up here, and make sure you hit this button so that it's a, a new separate texture. You can just rename that something like skirt. So for the texture, I like to use a magic texture, a bump node. You can just plug the factor into the height and then the normal into the normal right here. And we might need to bring in a texture coordinate to make this uh, a little cleaner. And I'll, for this, I'll just use generated. We'll see if that works. And then we can turn the scale up. You can see it's kind of like a knit pattern a little. I'll usually turn this up to something like 100 and see what happens when it runs. It looks a little better when you turn the distance down, maybe the strength to like 0.5, maybe even lower. And sometimes it looks nice when you turn the sheen up a little too. Next we'll add an armature. So I'm just going to go back into layout mode right here. And I'm actually going to move this up and I want to hide the skirt right here. Like that, just so we can see a little better. I'll also go in here and set this to material so everything just looks the same. So now we can hit shift A to add in an armature right here. And down here, this is object data properties. I want to go to viewport display and turn on in front like that. And I'll also turn on axes and names. Then we can go in edit mode and move this around. So I'll be doing this pretty quickly. And if you want a more in-depth rigging tutorial, I do have some other videos on that. So for this, I usually like to hit period and set the pivot point to active element. That way when you rotate it, it rotates from the head like that. So I'll just move this up. We can extrude this on the Z for our head. And if we want, we can make another one for our hat. So I'll just uh, duplicate this and rotate it. And this will be for our hat. And we can parent it to the head. So shift select that and then shift select this, control P and keep offset. So now the hat is parented to the head. I can just select this and duplicate it again. This is going to be for our leg. So we can just rotate it down like that. Place this where I want the knee to be, so maybe around here, and extrude that down over here. I'll extrude this down to the toe, like that. And you can see the dotted line, this should still be connected to our hip right here. So I'll select the head again and duplicate that and place uh, the head where I think the shoulder should go. And I can actually just rotate this by 90 degrees. So I'll extrude this 
on the x-axis right there until it gets to our hand like that. From the top, I just want to add a slight bend. So I'll move this on the Y a little. To see a little better, I'll just select these few and hide them with H. We can bring those back later. We can also hide the legs if we want to see a little easier. I'll just extrude this up. This is just going to be for our hand right here. Duplicate this like that, place that at the finger. And I also want to make sure that this is parented to the hand. So control P, keep offset. And now you can see it's parented to the hand. And I'll just duplicate this for each finger and the thumb right there. And you can just rotate these, place them where you think they should go. And when you have them where you want them, I usually like to just select my fingers and right click, subdivide, and this little box down here, you can set the number of cuts to two. So you have three bones per finger. And this down here, I just subdivide once, so it's two bones. So to bring the leg bones back, you can just hit Alt H and that should bring them back just fine. And the way I like to set my bones up is so that the X axis is the one that is, you know, I'm going to be using most often. So if you want our leg to bend right here so that it like swings like that, this should actually be rotated so the X is where the Z is. And I'm just going to run through and just change the axis. So you can do that with this roll right here. You can just select your bones like this. I'm just shift selecting my bones. And then when you move this, if you want multiple to rotate, you just have to hold alt while you do that and it will rotate multiples like that. So I'm just going to run through and make sure all of these are rolling in the position that I want. If you want to be organized, you can run through and name all these bones too. For renaming a whole bunch of bones at once, I use this add-on called Simple Renaming Panel that is free. So typically I like to set up just one side of my character first as much as I need to before symmetrizing it and flipping it to the other side. That way, if you add any constraints or things like that, those will be mirrored to the other side also. So you could do it right here, and this would be a simple, like, normal FK rig. If you wanted to add uh, some IK constraints for the feet and the arms, you could do that also. I'm not going to cover how IK is set up exactly. Um, I do that in a few of my other videos, and you can watch those. Um, I'll put a link right here. So now I'm just going to shut off the axes like that, and I'm just going to select everything, right-click, and names. You want to choose auto name left and right like that. You can see everything that is not in the middle will be given a dot L because this is the left side of our character. And then you can right click and symmetrize. And that will just flip everything to the other side and it will keep the same names, except you can see the dot L will change to dot R indicating that it's on the right side of the character. And then what you can do is select everything and you wanna make sure that your armature is selected last like that. And you can hit control P and with automatic weights. And that should parent everything to the armature and we can test it out by selecting our armature and going into pose mode up here and seeing if this works. So it seems like it is working. It makes sense uh, to clean this up, definitely. For instance, like if I move this, it's moving the scarf and you don't really need that to be happening at all. So with low poly characters like this one right here, instead of going into weight painting and doing things that way, I find it easier actually to just select your body part and go over to this over here, object data properties. And you can see now we have a bunch of vertex groups. These are for all of our bones, all of our deforming bones. And you can actually tab into edit mode. So for my hips right here, basically what I would want to do is just select everything right here. And I want this to only be following my hips, my hip bone right here. So I can press this arrow and choose remove from all groups. And now this won't have any weights or anything. And if we move any of the bones, this won't move at all. But I know that I want this to be parented to our hips. So I can just select the bone named hips and hit assign right there. And you want to make sure your weight is all the way up for this set to one when you hit assign. And now when we move this leg bone, the hips won't move at all. It'll only move if we move this hip bone right here, which also is the highest in the chain. So it just moves our entire character. That's something that you wouldn't have to worry about as much if you're using something like IK. So we could do the same thing for our scarf right here. I'll just uh, go back into object mode, select the scarf, go into edit mode, make sure everything is selected, remove it from all of the groups, and then I can just parent that to the head. So I'll just select head right here, make sure your weight is set to one and hit assign. And now when we select this and go back into pose mode, it will move uh, only when we move our head like this. 
So we could parent our our head and our hair, our eye and our eyebrow to just the head bone right here. So what you can do is just select each of those individually, go into edit mode, you have to remove from all groups, and then find the one that you want. You can also hit this arrow right here to search. We know we want it to be parented to our head, so you can just search for head. Just run through and do that for each of the objects you want parented to the head. Basically just run through and do that for all of the objects. If you're having a hard time seeing your character, you can also change the shape of your bones right here. So I could set this from octahedral to stick or something like that, something much thinner. So you can see now why I made the hips separate from the legs so that when you pivot them like that to face forward, it's not really twisting where it attaches too much. It just seems a little cleaner to leave it separate. So that's why I did that. And if you think it's not deforming very cleanly, you can mess with the modifier stack. So for this, I'll just click on the legs, go over to the modifiers. And sometimes it works better to put the armature before the subdivision surface modifier. That way it's deforming it before giving it a bunch of geometry. And you can see when I do that, it's quite a bit cleaner. But this might be different on like a case-to-case -case basis, so it's worth just testing it out to see if it looks better. I think I want our hips to deform a little bit when our legs move, so I can just select our hip and go into weight paint right here. I just did that with control tab. You can also do that by just going up here and going to weight paint like that. So before I start editing, I do want to mess with some settings. So you can go up here and you can change the strength and the weight all around. Another thing I like to do is go to options and turn on auto normalize. And that just makes it so when you're adding weight to one spot, if it already has weights uh, in another group, it will take them away from that. So they kind of balance each other out. So I have my weight set to one and my strength set to 0 0.1. That way uh, it only adds 0.1 at a time. So you can see now I have the thigh selected right here, which is this bone right here. And I can just go through and you know start editing like this until I think it looks good. Now it follows the leg just a little. So one thing we didn't do is add automatic weights to our skirt. So right now you can see it's using a pinning group if we go down under shape called pin. Instead we could set this to be the hips. So you can just select your skirt, then select your armature, control P, and instead of with automatic weights, I'll just do um, empty groups like that. And now you can see that we have a bunch of vertex groups here that should be, you know, the same as all of our bones, uh, except they're all going to be empty, so it has no weights. And you just want to make sure that the armature modifier is before the cloth simulation. So now we can parent parts of this to the hips. So I'll do that by tabbing into edit mode. Just make sure you select that loop right there, and I'll search for the hips, and we'll hit assign. Then you want to go over to the physics properties right here and choose hips for the pin group right there. So I made a little animation, and when you're doing a cloth simulation, uh, I think it's good practice to start out with all of your bones in their default positions and give the cloth a little time to simulate before you start moving your character around. So I did that, I just held this pose for 10 frames as you can see, and then I start moving it around like that. And you can see, because we changed the pin group and all that, that it's actually following the hips now, like that. And before rendering it out, you should select your cloth and bake the simulation. Just make sure you save it first in case it crashes or something like that. So you can just hit bake, just give it time to do its thing. Um, and this could take a while depending on how long your animation is and how dense the mesh is that you're using for your cloth. And once it's baked, you should be able to render it out no problem, and it'll also play a lot faster in the viewport for you. And if you're getting any errors, you might have to delete the bake and then mess around with these other settings right here. You can also go through and select other objects that are interacting with your cloth and try moving the modifiers around. So for most of my objects, I just made sure that the armature is before the subdivision surface modifier and also the collision. So you can do the same thing for the legs, same thing for like the head. I'll just move that before like that. All right, that's it for this one. Once again, you can get this project file on Patreon. I'm planning on doing one more spooky character this month before moving on to some other topics like maybe basic character animation. Subscribe if you don't want to miss anything and leave a comment if you have a video suggestion. I'd like to thank my patrons for their support, and I'd like to thank you for watching. Have a good one.